The United States of America, known as Land of the Free, Home of the Brave, has come to symbolize freedom throughout the world. People from all nations and from all walks of life have called the United States home. The United States has welcomed them with open arms. Indeed, the famed Statue of Liberty is the embodiment of this dream. In New York's public education system alone, its student body represents 145 countries. The United States has a deep affinity with Supreme Master Ching Hai. With her boundless love and compassion, Supreme Master Ching Hai has provided humanitarian assistance to many parts of the United States. In 1993, she sent relief teams to provide financial and material assistance to victims of the six Midwestern states that were severely affected by heavy rain and flooding. On December 27, 1997, at the benefit concert A Journey Through Aesthetic Realms, Supreme Master Ching Hai generously contributed 100,000 U.S. dollars each to the Vietnam Children's Fund and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs. The following year, at another benefit concert, One World of Peace Through Music, she once more contributed generously, with two charity organizations being the recipients of her love. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital received 150,000 U.S. dollars, and the Starlight Children's Foundation received a check for 100,000 U.S. dollars. Additionally, in the face of one of the worst human tragedies ever to occur on U.S. soil, on September 11, 2001, Supreme Master Ching Hai responded immediately, sending relief teams from around the country and all over the world to Ground Zero in New York City. Supreme Master Ching Hai's financial contributions amounted to over 300,000 US dollars to organizations aiding the victims. To this day, Supreme Master Ching Hai continues to extend her loving compassion to all parts of the US, from Virginia, Ohio, Kentucky, and Alabama, to California, Florida, Texas, Hawaii, and other states. We now invite you to listen to the following interview with Supreme Master Ching Hai entitled, Love is the Only Religion, in Texas, USA, on November 14, 1993. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. So what can I do for you, ladies and gentlemen? You want an interview right now? So, are you ready with your 1,001 questions? Yeah, you're so beautiful. Very noble. Number one question? <laughs> are there any special readings that you recommend for individuals who are seeking greater enlightenment? Oh, many, many, yes. Some examples? Uh, for example, for the Westerner who are Christian, there are books like from Yogananda on Christianity, and uh, from uh, St. Mark, Light on St. John, Light on St. Matthew, etc. And my book, of course. And as we <clears throat> approach the 21st century, what would you wish for mankind and the world? I wish whatever you wish. Peace, prosperity, and love between brothers and sisters. Do you think that there is a message in all the human tragedy that we are witnessing one event right after the other, the hurricanes, the floods, the fires, the earthquakes? Yes, definitely. I think you know. I think all of us know. What are we missing? Are we doing something wrong? Are we doing something to displease the universe or anyone? 
we are doing it all the time. <laughs> and we have been doing it since thousands of years. That is unkind to each other, killing each other, suppressing each other, including our younger brothers, sisters, like animals, yeah? I know I will displease many people by saying that, but since you ask me, I have to be absolutely frank. Please, by all means. Yes. You see, anything in the universe will return to where it began, right? Yes. yes. And in the Bible, since we are in the Western world, in the Bible, it is said that as you sow, so shall you reap. And if we believe in the Bible, we saw too many things that unfortunately will yield undesirable fruit for us. And sometimes it's accumulated in such a great intensity that uh, individual cleansing or purification is insufficient. So there has to be a kind of a great cleansing action, just like disasters, you know, earthquake and fire and flood and hurricane, etc., as you have mentioned. So the only thing to avoid this, to avoid the fruit, is to avoid to sow the seed. <laughs> yes, we have to start to be more God-worshipping, God-loving, God-fearing. Doesn't mean we go to the temple and blah, blah, blah all day long, how we love Him, but we have to love in action. Love Him and love His children. Yes. In the Bible, it is said very clearly, who told you to kill all this she goats and he ox to uh, make offering to me? Repent yourself, because your hands is full of innocent blood. Uh, if you do not stop all this, then I will never listen to you when you pray and when you seek me, I will turn my head away. Okay. God doesn't permit us to kill even to make offering to Him, so much less to kill to satisfy our very temporary physical appearance. So this is the cause of most of our disaster and sickness in this world. Scientifically speaking, we can prove that since uh, in America, uh, the majority of the people love red meat and they eat a lot. And so the rate of cancer are the number one in the world compared to other poor countries where they don't have so much meat the cancer is very, very, very low, just like nothing, right, compared to America. Well, that is uh, according to the research of all the doctors uh, and the scientists. So therefore, you see the connection between the facts and the science and the religious uh, statements, yeah? I'm not saying that we all have to be Catholic or anything. We just have to be loving, and that's the only religion there is. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Swine flu, Ebola reston virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections from a strain of Staphylococcus aureus. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella, bird flu, mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease, or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile, diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer, colon rectal cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer-related mortalities annually. 
In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 246 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight, with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. Pollute most of the water bodies. Deforest the lungs of the earth uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, cause world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption. Bacterial microbes, pesticides and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat, Breast, prostate and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Hysteria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat leads to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes and heart disease. Linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis. Classified as a major allergen. Lactose intolerance. Plus more. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. Is there any way that our faith can assist us in trying to combat, say, diseases such as AIDS and cancer? Is there some strength to be found in uh, your spirituality, in knowing and focusing more on your soul as opposed to your physical temple, your body? Right. Uh, yes, there are ways and means, provided people want to listen. Somebody just talked to me about how, how beneficial they have derived from our meditation practice and my advice, and how their life has changed, and how many sickness have gone away from them. And even if they have sickness, <laughs> you know, it's reduced into half size or, or nothing, mm -hmm. sometimes instantly. And they say, yes, yes, if they all listen to you, the world would be peaceful long ago. I say, yes, yes, if only they do listen, then no more suffering ever in this world. We will turn into paradise in no time. Do you see there being something special, something unique about you being a female master, about you being so youthful? Uh, why perhaps were you chosen as you are in this particular form to be our living master? I guess this is the will of the Most High, and I cannot do anything about it. I guess we need a change, huh? I always male masters, it's boring, huh? Yes. We need a change. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, being a female spiritual teacher has also some advantages, you know? Like uh, many women, don't like or uh, feel shy to talk to um, men teacher, so maybe they find it easier to communicate with a female teacher. Maybe that's uh, why uh, God has chosen me to do this job. <laughs> yes. You were recently honored fourfold in Hawaii and made an honorary United States citizen, also received a Peace Award and had a bronze bust erected in your honor and uh, had a day declared, uh, Supreme Master's Day, October 25th, I do believe it is. Yes. And is it to be from this day forward that it will be honored as Supreme Master's Day? Well, I, I believe so. If not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you are about the business then of having every day be a good day for mankind, for people who need help or assistance of some sort? You mean I'm always willing to be there? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, as, as long as I'm physically fit. Yes. All right. Any day. <laughs> and where do you proceed from here? You have uh, come through California, 
uh, you and your followers made a contribution, I believe some $200,000 to the uh, fire victims in California. And earlier this year, you made a contribution of perhaps $100,000 or so to the flood victims of the Midwest. Mm -hmm. As you move now across the United States and out of the United States, where will you go next to offer aid and assistance? Mm -hmm. Oh, we also uh, offer two hundred thousand dollars for Veteran Day, uh, for the woman, yes. uh, the day of the woman who were recognized, the day of the veteran woman. Yes. Yeah, that was an eleven eleven this year. Yes. So I thought it is very honorable for the women who have fought in Vietnam. Yes. Who and have been recognized. Yes, the nurses of yeah. the any, Vietnam any, War. Yes, yes, yes. They yes. are as brave as men, if not braver. Indeed. Yes. If we consider their physical body and some of the discomfort that the women have to go through, which men don't. Yes. Uh, in comparison, I think women uh, who do such service are even braver. But don't tell the men. <laughs> <laughs> I always speak very fair, that's all, yes. And with our various religions as they are today, why do you believe we've had such a history of so many different religions? What has man through the ages been seeking through religion and philosophy? What is that, that need that we're seeking to satisfy or that fear? Yes. Mm, yes, fear is one of the reasons. And another reason is that we innerly are uh, the essence of the Most High. You know, we came from God, otherwise where, where do we come from? You think we come from plant or from the wall or stone? So we must come from God, you know, the Most High, the most intelligent, you know, the highest consciousness. So that inner, inherent, the latent uh, consciousness always keeps seeking itself despite all the coverage, like position, wealth, fame, and all this worry, knowledge, keep occupying our attention, our word, yes? And then the highest consciousness inside always keeps telling you that you are not that. You are not the PhD, you are not this garbage that you accumulated. You are not Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. That and this. You are that, you, you are the consciousness, you, you are godlike, you know? Yes, before you came to this world and get a PhD or become Mrs. and Mrs. and have all kind of knowledge and habit that you call yourself, <laughs> you know, that is another self. And the real self, that is the God-like, that belongs to the kingdom of God. This is God-children, we call God-children. It means we are God-like. Yeah, that the God qualities always keep reminding us that we are not this and that and others, yeah? Are we supposed to believe then that we are part of that universal and divine God energy sure. and intelligence? You're not supposed to believe, you just are. You are. Yeah, and then now you look at what you identify yourself with. And Mrs. So and so, and I have so much knowledge, I have so much wealth, and I have such and such a habit. All this is not you. You are the one behind all this, and it, all this is covering us. Therefore, we make us suffering because we identify ourselves with our mistakes, our success, our failure, our this and that and other, and our circumstances that affect us. And we forgot the real superconscious, the supreme inner self, you know, the supreme spirit, which is God, which dwells within us. That's what the Bible says, God dwells in you, that means you are God. Apart from the body, it's God inside, nothing else. Are we closer <laughs> to our true self? Um, when we are children, you were wonderful with the girls up here a while back. Uh, are we Closing. more yes. godlike as children because we've learned less, or is it when we get older that we take on all those trappings and become too physical and materialistic? You're right, you're right, yes. When we are born as children, at least we are cleansed already partially of form of the residue from the last lives or whatever existence we had, see? So when we were born, we are nearer to God. We just come directly from the rest place, you know, more peaceful and abundant. So um, that's why children are more innocent, you see, and they forgive easily, and they, they have no worries or nothing, yes? But we, uh, the more we come up, the more we grow up, the more we accumulate all these experiences, and then we identify ourselves with that, yes? For example, I'm an angry person, I'm an agitating person, I'm a bad-tempered person. This is not you. 
just you grown up with all kind of circumstances and make you like that, and then you think you are like that. And that is a you. It's ridiculous. When you're born, you're not like that. No. Yes. I'm an alcoholic and I'm that and this and all this. It's not true. There is so much <laughs> crime uh, in the world now, so much one on one violence uh, with mankind. What can we do to begin to have a greater respect for ourselves and human life so that we're not killing one another, so that we are not so violent and so, so cruel to one another? Spreading the love message all the time, always broadcasting positive. It's better to tell the children that, honey, uh, you just say it in a positive way instead of the negative way, the way we most often do. For example, say, don't be so dirty. Then we could say, honey, keep yourself clean. And the word clean will go inside the mind instead of the word dirty. It doesn't matter when you say don't or do. It, it's the, the essence of the, the sentence that's important. So most people say, don't be so dirty, or don't be so cruel, you know, or don't be uh, so nasty and this and that and other. Instead, just say, be kind, be gentle, be gracious, be graceful. And then the essence of the world will boil down into graceful, gracious, kind. Yes. And when everything else is gone, only the essence remains. So we always keep telling children, you are dirty, don't get so dirty, don't stay late, just say go to bed early. <laughs> Even if you say don't before. <laughs> well, um, American television and all the messages that it sends the various media, as a matter of fact, the newspaper, the magazines, the movies. Do you think that we have a long way to go in order to reorient ourselves toward um, a better way of life, uh, a higher spirituality? Yes, we have a long way. But I hope it's not too long. <laughs> we try our best. You see, everyone has to try. I was thinking on the way back here uh, that, uh, you know, when we met our neighbors, and then uh, I invited him also to come along here. And then uh, we talked to the driver who let me stay in his wife's house. So I said, then why don't you do more party often and, and get to know your neighbors, start from individual. That's what I did when I was uh, married to my ex, uh, the best uh, husband. <laughs> yeah, I always made party. At that time, I'm not uh, practicing Kwan Yin method. I just mm -hmm. meditate uh, with another kind of method, and we were vegetarian. And so I thought uh, in the Europe, uh, the neighbors don't know each other, you know? It's different from our tradition, like for example in the East or in Africa, people are more friendly towards neighbors. So I say, I start. Okay, so I make party once a while, maybe once every few weeks, mm -hmm. and invite all the neighbors. Whoever want to come, come. I just drop the invitation in the box, say hello. We have a know your neighbors party. <laughs> uh, can you come? Yeah, thing like that. And if they don't come this week, they come next week. So if everyone does this, you know, and then spreading out love and the message of togetherness, yeah, every unit, yeah, then all the neighbors we know each other, and the whole nation we know each other, and then we have better communication, and then we have better understanding. You know, you, you wouldn't fight with the one who, who you at least know and have dinner with. You know, at least, you know, something will stop you, yeah? And then you think twice before you want to harm him, at least, you know? So this thing will keep people together. So why don't we all start to do that? You know, each one just, just take care of his neighbor, it's enough. Yes, and then everyone take care of the neighbor, and then the whole nation is well taken care of and united in love and friendship. At least before we start to talk about heaven and kingdom of God and so enlightenment and anything else, so why don't we just love our neighbor? Very easy, no? What is immediate enlightenment? I don't know. Enlightenment implied light, you see? Yes. So when anyone helps you to see light from heaven immediately, that is called immediate enlightenment. Mm. Yes. All right. Yes, and that's what we help people to do. You see, people can see light or hear the heavenly music. It means that the message of God, yeah? It, what it's called, the Word in the Bible, mm -hmm. yes. And the Word was God and the Word was with God, remember? Yes, the Word, that is what we can hear from God. And at the moment we hear that, it's called the moment of enlightenment, yes? Okay. It's difficult to hear that, the Word from God, 
the message from God. It's difficult to see light, but nevertheless, some people see them in deep prayer, in deep sorrow, or in a blackout kind of situation where they contact with the higher world instead of this physical world. But really, yeah? So when you cannot see the light or hear the message of God yourself, and you find somebody who helps you to do it quicker, and that is called the process of uh, seeking the truth, seeking the teacher. And whoever can help you to see the light and hear the sound immediately, that is a so-called spiritual teacher. A friend once told me um, to never judge a person by their physical appearance right. and their physical trappings right. because amongst us, yes. in our midst, are individuals who are of a higher uh, calling or a higher soul, right. and that uh, we are daily walking amongst people who are more spiritually advanced than we might ever guess yes, that they, they are. Yes, all these are yes. very advanced people. All right, and I recently saw the movie about the tragic life of rock and roll singer Tina Turner, oh. What's Love Got to Do With It? Oh. And they opened the movie with a, a Buddhist saying, which I could only paraphrase now, about the most beautiful lotus flower uh, finds a way to grow through the thickest mud. Yes. Do you believe that there is some merit or uh, something to be said for struggle and suffering and tragedy? Is there goodness to be found in bad? No, I don't believe it. Goodness is never to be found in bad. Of course, for some, okay, support this suffering, awaken us, right? And make us realize the ephemeral nature of life and the suffering kind of existence that we have to lead sometimes. Suppose that is good, okay? But it's better that we don't have it all together, better that we awaken, that we avoid it all together by not sowing the suffering seed. Is it possible, though, to have a balance in life by having, what is it, the yang and the yang, the, yeah. the good, the bad, the suffering? Yeah, sure. Now we have to do it, because as long as we live in this world now, it's too late now to say, I can avoid it altogether. Okay, so we have to accept suffering as a part of our yin-yang, yeah? A balance of positive and negative. But nevertheless, we don't sow more for the future, first. Second, we don't sow suffering for our neighbors, yeah? And also, we will minimize the result of our past actions by uh, adding more strength of the positive spirit into our daily life, by meditation, by... Um, thinking of God, you know, the right way. Yes. Everything has a way, actually. Yes. Do you believe yes. in the anima and the animus, the male spirit and the female spirit within each of us and having a harmony and balance therein? Yeah, yeah, that's what we call positive and negative force. Okay. Yes. Female is supposed to be a negative force. Uh, whatever is weak and slow or kind of inert, we call it negative. Or some people call it female, right? <laughs> and other, a uh, little bit uh, kind of uh, outgoing and strong, we call it positive. Yeah? Uh, many people call it different name. Yeah, mm -hmm. like creative power, that is also called negative, actually. Some call it negative, some call it creative. Mm -hmm. The female energy, or the uh, yin, is supposed to be the creative energy. Mm -hmm. But then it has a side effect, you know, because when you are created, then you're supposed to be uh, demolished one day. So. But when both balance, you know, then we are in uh, equilibrium with the universe, in harmony, and we don't have much suffering. In terms of us as a society abusing our children sexually, uh, physically, with the violence, and also emotionally, how should we regard children? We've basically touched on children and how innocent and free they are, but what would you have to say about abusing children and mistreating them and not giving them the environment to develop into their highest self? Well, fortunately, this is not many. Hmm? Even though sometimes we read it frequently on newspaper or hear it on the news, but it's, even though as frequently as it is, it's just individual case repeatedly, so it looks a lot. But actually, our society is still okay, still clean. Well, you can't help if some people have mental disturbance and they don't know it. If they know it, they would go to a psychiatrist or treat themselves, you see? So these we can just look upon as a disaster, accident into some of the individual lives. 
in which they cannot go out of it, cannot help themselves, or the time has not come for them to realize their mistake. Okay? Besides, when we talk a little bit deeper, then there are many things contribute to these crimes you call crime, yes. as well as many other disasters. Is there is a root cause for all this retribution. So no one is truly as innocent as we think, except God is innocent, except our soul is absolutely innocent. But we collect so many not innocent information with which we live and through which we grow and with which we die. And we bring it back again, again and again, until we're fed up with it, until we learn to grow out of it. So that's the negative side of life. And fortunately, we don't have that many, I think. And is that the purpose of reincarnation, to return and to conduct unfinished spiritual business uh, with God or with ourselves? Right. Until we find the right way, the right purpose of our life in the universal plan, we always are miserable because we will be doing wrong. We don't do it exactly the way it's planned. Therefore, of course, it's chaotic. So we have to re come back and redo it, redo it, until we touch the right button. Yeah, so we're satisfied. That's the way, that's when we are enlightened. We find God and then uh, daily nourishing this knowledge of enlightenment until we're completely sure and discover all the things that we, we have to discover. Yes, so we don't have to come back again. And we can, we can, we can come back as teacher spiritual guide. I was reading uh, that at one time you did have a circle of disciples and that you moved beyond that uh, because you believed that anyone could be a master. Might you explain, do you still have disciples in terms of the ones that work and, and study closest to you? Well, I can't avoid it anymore. <laughs> People force me to be their teacher. And if that serve their life for the better, of course I will have to do it. Yes, willing or not willing. Yeah. Before I, I was a little bit more innocent. I thought everybody is Buddha. <laughs> I learned that everyone is Buddha. Okay, everyone can be master. Everyone has master potential within themselves. But most of them are covered with all kind of dust and prejudices and misconception. Therefore, they can't be master. Not that they don't have the master quality. For example, you and your sister, both are beautiful, right? But one is made up and bath and do coiffure and mm -hmm. wear elegant dress the way you do, mm -hmm. and the other just cover himself in mud and uh, run around on the floor all the time and throw dust upon herself, okay? Mm -hmm. And you can't say there's a beautiful girl, even though she has a beautiful body and figure the way you do, oh. right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Will you render any more writings or a book which we might study day to day or go by? Uh, any of my book you can have. They are just casual talk, just like now, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, when I talk to people, and then my disciple have transcribed it and uh, printed it into books. It's easier, convenient when you carry it anywhere, um, better than tapes and video. Mm -hmm. So any books you can have. I'm saying, too, for individuals who want to follow you closely once you leave mm -hmm. and to still have Understand. your writings there. Uh -huh. Are you working on something new? We generally ask oh, if there's understand. something to look forward to from I you. I see. I don't actually do anything new. Mm. It's just uh, <laughs> I, I do what is necessary at that moment. For example, today I'm invited here, and then you would like so much to talk to me, yes. so I just give you the interview, Thank and you. later people like to ask me something, then I talk to them. And all these things become new then, <laughs> oh, <I see. laughs> because it's not yesterday. That's what it is. I don't deliberately write any books or plan any new things. I have new music, though, oh, records. Tell us yeah. about the new music. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. I wrote some songs. Mm -hmm. Talking from God's standpoint, mm -hmm. not from human standpoint. <laughs> because for most of us, the right song, even holy song, you know, just right from our own standpoint, never right from God's standpoint. We are just beggar all the time. Oh, please help me, please uh, bless me, please this and that and other. I'm lost without you. Oh, he, he is a great one, he's that and others, you know. I'm writing this music all from God's standpoint. 
that God speak to his children. Yes, so maybe it's something new. Will there be words or just yeah, sound Yeah, words music? and music. Yes, right. words and music. That is excellent. Do you think we have very long to look forward to living on this earth? Are we ready for Armageddon? Are we ready for the end of the world with all the tragedies and world suffering that we're seeing? Uh, I don't think we have that bad. Huh? I don't know. It's um, okay. If you look in the Bible and if you listen, you would think the world is coming to an well, end at the end of the century or so. Oh, the world ends every day. Aha. Uh -huh. When everybody dies, that's the end to him. I don't know. Some of the spiritual realities that were revealed to you in your studies in the Himalayas. In my constructing these questions, I was thinking about an audience out in Radio Land listening on a Sunday morning who might not be familiar with your teachings and who might want to become initiated and who might want to better understand uh, the Kuan Yin method or the Kuan Yin route to spirituality. Mm -hmm. So you mean I should talk about the inner realization? Yes. Okay. Please. There are too many to talk about first because the universe is vast and it contains within ourselves. So I can only tell you a few. For example, like um, for an ordinary person to get enlightenment, you normally will see uh, light and sound, light, different colors, or brilliance, sometimes more than thousand suns. And so some people will see less than that. Some people just see kind of moving black cloud until sometimes, yeah, but very rare. Most people see immediate light from God. Light represents wisdom, represent the super consciousness, the light without shadows, the light that you don't see with your eyes, but you see with your inner awareness, yes. So that is called enlightenment when you see that. And then you hear the sound, the silent sound for God, which bring you the message from heaven. And the more you hear that, even though without language, it's kind of like, like music, but without instruments. And you can't make out what it is. But it's so beautiful and melodious, and it lifts you up above the mundane level of consciousness and bring you back to where you're supposed to be. And from that high standpoint, you direct your whole life into a more righteous direction, uh, and then we clean all the mess and the entanglement that we don't see when we were too low here below. <laughs> we see better when we are in higher. Yeah. So to say higher doesn't mean we have a ladder or something, just a higher in consciousness, in awareness, in intelligence, that we are back to the true source of wisdom, a true self which is God-like. We are back to God which dwells within our Holy Temple here, see? So we truly recognize ourselves, who is who, and we stop occupying with all the habits and the knowledge that bind us from the outside. The more you contemplate on this inner wisdom, the more you remember your real self, the wiser you become, and the more your life becomes smoother, and everything goes better, better, until you completely know a lot of things, and many things, or all things, and you become like omnipresent omnipotent, and everyone who pray to you, in any corner of the universe, you will know. And you help them immediately, according to the situation, and according to what is benefit for that person. Uh, that is the highest achievement of a so-called master. I heard many years ago that Quan Yin, I received a statue from a little shop right. at home in Buffalo. It said that Kuan Yin was the Japanese goddess of love and happiness or mm. goodness and mm. health. And I was confused as to how we might now have the Kuan Yin method and have it span numerous cultures and go beyond Japan. Okay. Uh, Kuan Yin is not the goddess of Japan alone. It's mm. a goddess of Chinese, of Vietnamese, of Indian, <laughs> of Tibetan. They call it, they call it different name. Okay. Avalokiteshvara in India. And uh, when he's in India, is a he, and in mm -hmm. Tibet, is a he, and come to Japan, and Chinese, Vietnamese she. become a she. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it's just a mythological uh, figure. She was one of the master of the past. It's like Moses or, you know, the past masters, ascended masters. Because when she was alive, when people prayed to her, and she responded, you see? Therefore, and then uh, only because she, when she was alive and all her disciples and non-disciples who were sincere, we had benefit from her presence. 
and her blessing. And then people just continue like that even after she died. The same with Jesus, Buddha. That's why we don't have response so much, because all the Master has ascended. And we have to pray to the living Master, supposed to do. Yes. But then uh, after a Master died, people continue to pray because his grandfather prayed and it helped, so the grandchildren continue to pray and forgot the essence, that the blessing field, the magnetic field of the Master is gone. You can pray to a master after he die uh, a few hundred years, but not longer than 500 years. After that, no use, because his magnetic field is gone. And what caused the magnetic field is the devotee's heart. You see, his connected spiritual disciples still stay a few generations after he die. You see, and their heart carry the magnetic field, the loving atmosphere of the Master, because they still love the Master. And they love the Master, and they were already connected with Master while the Master was still alive, or at least a very advanced disciple while he was alive. Therefore, the, the living lineage, the living bloodline still continue after the Master died and pass on to a few generations. That would be at the most 500 years. It because of the disciple because the Master is still living in the heart of the disciples. Therefore, His blessing and love are still there through the disciples. But after He's gone, the connection are gone, disciples are gone, and you don't have a good disciple, keep the lineage alive, you pray to that Master no good. <laughs> How do we begin to rid ourselves of the materialism and all uh, our accoutrements that might keep us further away from our spiritual self? How can we become more selfless and not want to have this and be this? Yes. It's difficult if we water the plant from <laughs> the leaves and not the root. You see, the basic of all this misunderstanding, ignorance and greed are because it came from the root that <laughs> we have not opened the power of understanding. Therefore, we misunderstand, and we think the money will make us happy. We seek in the truth, which is the eternal happiness. But then we misunderstand. We thought money will make us happy, or beautiful girls will make us happy. The, the true thing that makes us happy, that we seek for, is the true happiness, is the truth, is our real spiritual power, you know, the real God self, yeah? But because we don't know that, so we keep, uh, wanting this and that and others. But as soon as your understanding power, your real source of understanding is open for you, then you understand differently. You say, ah, this is what I want, not that. See, then all these things will fall apart. You don't need to do anything to it. Just like you water the plant or the root and then all the leaves will be green. Yeah. Are we to consider that we are on this earth to make a contribution as good human beings, as caring human beings, as loving creatures? Yes, also, that is a side effect. Uh, but the most important is that because we are happy within ourselves, we satisfy. Only when you're satisfied, then you can satisfy others. Only when you know how to love yourself, you know how great you are, then you can make others great or respect the greatness of other people. Therefore, all the masters say, know yourself. Eh? Or seek you first the kingdom of God, which is within you. That means yourself. Know yourself, or seek you in the kingdom of God, or seek the Holy Spirit which dwells within you. Know you not, you are the temple of God, and the Holy Spirit dwells within you. It's all the same thing. Or seek your Buddha nature, the highest Buddha nature. It's the same thing, honey. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Will we uh, see you in the company of the Pope? Have you had occasion to meet Pope John Paul? He's a holy man. He's a very nice person. But, uh, you, you asked me, I'm started because I never thought about it. I, well, I saw in some of the literature that you were yes. uh, comparable to the Pope in the Asian world, oh, I and see. I just didn't know in the effort oh, to see. make mankind and our human condition better, uh -huh. that maybe we could bring all the, the spiritual oh, philosophers and uh, teachers yeah. together and that's right. get the world in order. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Maybe you organize that. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. That's about all the questions that I have for you, Supreme Master, mm, thank at this you. point. I thank you for the audience here and, you know, the time with you. I think that that was extremely generous and kind of you. It's all right. Thank you. <laughs>
Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Thank you for joining us today on Words of Wisdom. Please keep your dial tuned here to Supreme Master Television for Models of Success. Coming up next, right after Noteworthy News. May the Providence guide your life in nobility, wisdom, and love. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash W-O-W